All right, TGIF everyone, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here, and this is the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks, another active end to a work week, but things will quiet down in time for the weekend, but it's also going to cool down in time for the weekend. Now, if you watched Weather Geeks on Thursday evening, I speculated some and showed you some model data to back up the idea that we would probably, you know, it'd be a close shave, but we'd probably be missed by the bulk of the severe weather last night. And that became more and more obvious after I recorded that video and later in the evening and on 21 News 11 last night, I really started to back away, <laughs> pardon me, back away from the idea that we would have some sort of a severe weather event overnight and first thing this morning. Here's a look at the storm reports over the last 24 hours. A lot of wind damage in Michigan, western New York, northwest PA. That complex kind of went like this last night. While we got grazed a little bit in northern Ohio and we had one severe thunderstorm warning in our area in Trumbull County very early this morning, uh, we did not have any severe weather reports in our viewing area from the overnight and early morning activity. Now, as we went through the day, today the uh, thunderstorms that blew up in parts of the lower Ohio Valley and into Kentucky did um, shoot some cirrus clouds our way. It got kind of cloudy for a time uh, midday into the afternoon today. That helped to stabilize the atmosphere. It didn't get quite as warm as we thought it would today. It wasn't quite as sunny as we thought it would be today because of the blow-off from those thunderstorms off to our south and west. But late this afternoon, that blow-off did dissipate. Uh, we saw an agitation of the cumulus clouds in the sky, and we had a couple of thunderstorms that did pop up. We had uh, a severe thunderstorm warning briefly for parts of northeastern Trumbull, northwestern Mercer County. That storm is long gone as of the recording of this video. But not only did the sun come back out and the atmosphere destabilized some, the dew points started to come back up. At the airport in Vienna, the dew point retreated to the 50s for a time earlier today. But as of 721, it's in the upper 60s, very juicy air mass out there this evening. So we have, you know, a lot of warmth and humidity still in the atmosphere this evening, even though we're heading towards sunset. So we'll have to keep an eye on things. As nearby as Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, tornado watches are out. Tornado watch box extends back to Indianapolis and down towards Louisville as well. Guess I wouldn't be surprised if at some point a severe thunderstorm watch is issued for the southeastern part of Ohio. I kind of doubt we'll see a severe thunderstorm watch in our TV viewing area in northeast Ohio and northwestern Pennsylvania, and I'm going to show you some model data to back up that idea. In the meantime, it's fairly quiet out there. That one warning we had earlier uh, did extend up into Crawford County. That warning get getting set to expire at the uh, top of the hour at 8 o'clock in eastern Crawford County. There's nothing else on the radar. Probably very little will happen over the next, oh, probably three hours or so. It's as we head closer to midnight that uh, showers and perhaps some thunder will try to return. But by that point, the atmosphere will not be as unstable locally as it is right now off to our west. There's going to be a big mean line of, th of thunderstorms that rolls through Indiana and Kentucky. This line has had a history of producing tornadoes. There was a tornado in St. Louis proper earlier on today. There was quite a bit of damage at the zoo in St. Louis and other neighborhoods around that major American city. And uh, well, the atmosphere will stay very, very unstable off to our south and west. But by the time that decaying line moves into eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania, there's just not going to be much instability left in the atmosphere. There will be some, so we don't want to discount the possibility of some wind gusts and perhaps a noisy thunderstorm or two as we head towards midnight-ish. I'm going to stop the animation here at about 11.45 p.m. Taken literally, this model takes the bulk of the showers and thunderstorms into southeast Ohio, and there's very little that happens up here. That may be right, but again, I'm not going to discount the possibility that we get grazed by a gusty line of showers with possible thunder right around midnight tonight. That'll be our last risk for anything strong, any sort of severe weather for a while with the cool pattern that's about to settle on in. As we head into the daylight hours Saturday, we'll be dry for the first handful of hours of daylight Saturday, but this cold front will march through around midday. And let me back things up to midday right around here, 1130 noon. Not much on the model here, and I don't think there will be much, but there could be a shower. Probably a very low chance of thunder with that. It's a Saturday in May, so a lot of people have outdoor plans, and I wouldn't cancel any plans at this point. Uh, just be, be prepared for some changeable conditions on Saturday, and what I mean by that is the temperature is going to drop as we go into the afternoon. Uh, midday high in the lower 70s, so we'll be in the lower 60s probably by the end of the afternoon. It'll be breezy at times, and you'll need a jacket by Saturday evening. If you're going to be doing something outdoors, you know, temperatures will start retreating to the 50s and with a gusty breeze and clouds overhead, maybe there's a sprinkle. Um, it's going to feel distinctly different outside at this time tomorrow evening 
as opposed to 24 hours earlier, in other words, right now. So changes are on the way. Uh, some clearing of the sky briefly Saturday night, but the clouds will roll back in Sunday. And just an, uh, kind of a gloomy Sunday afternoon, I think. And, uh, you know, I, I backed off our high temperature expectations for Sunday. We had 64 in the forecast yesterday for Sunday. We made it uh, 62 today, and that still might be a little optimistic. And I think there's going to be a day or two next week where we have a hard time getting out of the 50s. Cool weather is going to dominate for a while here. So again, temperatures fall on Saturday, 62 on Sunday, a brighter day coming our way Monday, but it won't do as much good in the temperature department. Each and every day beyond tomorrow will be below the average by some magnitude all the way it looks like through Memorial Day weekend. So just about 10 days going out here. Uh, Memorial Day is coming up in 10 days. And while 70 is not a cold day, it's still by Memorial Day, that's four degrees below the average. So if you usually try to open up your pool around Memorial Day, I know that can be tempting. And we've had some hot Memorial Days in, in recent years. This is not going to be one of those years. Uh, most people will probably hold off on opening that pool until June because of a map like this. This is today's weeks three and four outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, and the pattern will warm up. Um, I like what they did with the weeks three and four outlook. And, you know, weeks three and four, that would be the first week to week and a half of June. And I do think by that point, the cool pattern will have relaxed and we'll start to see some true summery weather like we've had over the last couple of days, making a comeback, <clears throat> making a comeback, I should say. But the 80s that we've had over the last two days, probably the last 80s we'll see until sometime in early June. I'll keep you updated on social media all evening long about the potential for some gusty showers and storms in a handful of hours. And I'll have a full update tonight, 21 News at 11 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you back here for Weather for Weather Geeks on Monday.